Well, in today's episode of the dumb stuff I've done while scuba diving, I actually popped a dry suit zipper. Yep, that's right. Got my dry suit here. You can see I've got an internal zip and I've got a flat zip or the one that goes over the top to protect it. And as you can see, I've popped it. The teeth have come completely off of the suit itself. Just another thing that comes with underwater salvage work. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we got another lift with Seto. We're down here on the beautiful Lake Norman once again, and we're assisting Seto with a cabin cruiser lift. It's not very deep, it's about 10 foot deep at the max point here, but it is setting on the bottom. So we've gotta figure out how we're gonna rig. Are we gonna run straps up underneath? Are we actually going to clip off to some uh, stern eyes? Or are we just gonna clip off to the stern drive itself? But well, we're gonna go jump in, do a quick search real quick, and then see what we can come up with. All right guys, so we're gonna jump right into this salvage. And like I said during the teaser here, I did have a little dry suit failure. Thankfully it was the external zip, not the internal zip. Uh, and I was still able to make my dive. I do want to talk a little bit about, about being properly prepared and having a proper save a dive kit. Even in commercial work like this, you need a save a dive kit. And sometimes that means having an extra BC, having an extra set of fins, or in my case, having multiple dry suits. And a lot of people say, you know, well, you just got dry suits because you're a dive shop owner. And it's really not that. I have multiple dry suits for different purposes, but sometimes I have a backup to my backup to my backup. And in my case, that's, that's what I do. And to be honest if you're working around gas and oil and other hazmatic material you are going to have equipment failure at any given time and you need to be properly prepared for that uh, thankfully like I said this was just the external zip on this one not the internal zip so I was able to complete the task or the job at hand but we're gonna do our survey like we do on any other salvage job here. Once we get ready, we're going to swim over to where the vessel is and just swim around it, do a quick survey, see where our attachment points are, and see what we have uh, to work with on this particular job. Now, we are dealing with com a confined space here because we're dealing with a dock series where the vessel has went down. And so we are going to have very limited space to operate. But just like any other job, we're going to do a good assessment of it see what we need to do we're going to coordinate with our surface crew and then of course get the job done so here you can see i'm at the transom or the back of the boat here the stern area this is a uh, double stern drive so there's dual stern drives there coming out the bottom uh, the swim deck has been broken off this vessel this is basically a cabin cruiser if you're not familiar what that is just think of a big v-hole boat that's got a, a built-in camper on the front of it it's, a, it's why they call it a cabin cruiser it's got a cabin little sleeping quarters now one thing you will notice the stern of the vessel is sitting on the bottom but the bow is not the bow is pointing straight up in the air and this is going to end up being a good thing for because we can actually get a belly band all the way underneath this vessel without having to rig it one time lift it and then put a belly band under both myself and the other salvage diver we can actually take a band and shimmy it all the way back to the stern where we need it and get it strapped down so this is a good thing that this vessel is sitting the way it is plus being able to do it this way is going to protect us by not having to put a man directly underneath the hull of this vessel but as I swim on around to the port side, uh, you'll see I'm just going to continue my inspection or my survey here just to make sure that um, there's no damage to the vessel or anything like that that would really uh, kind of change the game for us, if you will, after we start the lifting and the pumping process. But there you see I put my hands on the, um, the vents. we got to make sure once we lift it up high enough that those vents come out of the water so that as we're pumping we're not just pulling water straight out of the lake directly back into it but uh, we're going to go ahead and hook up the belly bands now 
And these belly bands, like I said in a previous video, if you guys go hammock camping, uh, they're basically hammock straps. Wrap around a tree, you got your different loops there that you can hook your hammock into. These are just a lot more heavier duty. And so they're designed to hold lift bags and other uh, lifting devices. So we're going to take these, and as you can see, one diver is going to be on the other side. I'm going to be on the starboard side. And we are just going to simply swim them all the way up underneath the hull of this vessel. And we're going to swim it all the way back to the stern. Now, now we're not going all the way to the very tip of the stern. We're actually going to come back about two to three feet because that's where we want most of the lift. We we actually need to get it underneath the engine compartment alone. So um, most of the time on these cabin cruiser or stern drives, your engine compartment is going to be about two to three foot uh, from the stern itself. So. We're gonna go ahead and kind of stop right there and you'll see I'm not going all the way to the back. I'm gonna stay up a little bit. Now temporarily, I am just gonna put the strap here because we are going to take uh, a ratchet strap to secure this so it does not move. And I'm gonna go underneath the railing, uh, as you can see I'm doing there, and then run that ratchet strap all the way across to where the other diver is and then secure it nice and tight so that we can um, secure our backs to it. But like I said, I'm just gonna temporarily tie a knot here with it, just a, a rope that was on the vessel just to kind of hold that strap in place so I don't lose it when I'm under there and then I'll go ahead and make my go up and make a surface uh, interval and get the ratchet strap from the surface crew as well plus I can double check with the other diver that all is good and that he is ready to continue on with the salvage now, one thing I didn't mention earlier, anytime you use the belly band straps like we do, you want to make sure that they're nice and flat against that vessel, and you want to make sure that they're oriented properly as well. Um, the flat straps basically have loops about every two foot or so, and you want to make sure those loops are on the outside because those loops are going to be what you secure your lifting devices or your lift bags to. Um, and if you happen to have them on the inside, when you go to ratchet this strap down and make it tight, you're not going to have access to those loops. So you always want to make sure that they're on the outside and that it's flat and that it's uh, secure you don't want any twist in it um, just so that you're not damaging anything and that you got the maximum strength of the straps itself so now what I'm doing is just getting the ratchet strap in uh, working order I'm gonna make sure that all the um, entanglements are out of it all the loops are out of it and I just want to secure the belly band strap to the vessel and this is where we're really concerned about the placement of where uh, our our straps are going to be so once I have everything secure before we tighten the ratchet strap down we are going to make sure that it's in the proper position or where it needs to be on the vessel because we want all the lift to be directly above or directly below if you will the engine compartment of this vessel because that's going to be the heaviest part as well um, we did secure one lift bag we just did a 1,000 pound lift bag on the front of the vessel on the bow and that's not really meant for anything currently basically meaning we're not going to be using that to lift this vessel up the cool thing about cabin cruisers and one things that make them very easy to lift is all you really got to have out of the water is the stern and if you can get the stern high enough to where the cabin or the gunnels are out of the water but the cabin is still in the cabin will typically trap air into it and as long as the windows and things are like that are shut it'll hold that air in and we can see that in this video alone that's why the bow is kind of sticking up the way it is it has trapped air in it that means it's a waterproof tight seal and as long as we can get the gunnels and the stern up out of the water then of course we can lift it and start pumping that out and the cabin of course will will be fine it, it won't be taken on water that is of course as long as all the windows and things like that are shut and all the portholes and all that but we're going to go ahead and finish get this secured up here and as you can see i'm just taking my time i'm not rushing i'm getting the strap exactly where i need it to be um, to get the maximum amount of lift possible and i'm securing it making sure everything is nice and flat and then we will go ahead and rig our lift bags uh, to that belly band as well now when we put the lift bags I've talked about this in the past as well anytime that you secure a lift bag you need to get it as low as possible on this vessel basically with the belly bands and the lift bags we are creating a create or a cradle system uh, we're not just putting bags on this vessel and bringing it up we're going to create a cradle system so that as it lifts up we will have the maximum amount of lift 
uh, once lift bags come out of the, out of the water, you you're going to lose every bit of lift that you got. And as the vessel comes out of the water, the vessel itself is actually going to become a lot heavier because it's not displacing as much water at that point. So you need the bags as low as possible. And there you can kind of see one of those loops there on the outside. But we want to get these bags as low as possible to maximize the lift. And as you will notice later on during this video, we have a very, very tight limited space here uh, of room to work with. So these bags, if they happen to over inflate on the side of this vessel, it's going to actually lift the dock up with it as it comes. So we've got to be very strategic of where we place these bags. But I'm going to go ahead and take one. The other diver is going to take one, and we're just going to take our time, get everything positioned where we need it. Um, and these 2,000 pound bags, we're actually going to use 4,000 pounds of lift to get this vessel up. But these 2,000 pound bags are a beast just for one person to work with. So we've really got to trust our surface crew up top that they can sit there and drain air out of them as we're pulling them down and kind of hold them in the position for us as well, just to make our jobs a little bit easier. Now, like any other time that we do this, uh, it's not pretty. Uh, a lot of times our visibility goes from, say, 10 foot to zero foot almost instantaneously. So you've got to be very, very familiar with your equipment. When you're working with the anchor shackles that are attached to the bottom of these bags, you want to make sure that you don't lose the little bolt or the little carrier bolt that kind of secures it. You need to make sure that you understand how the bands work and that you can get to that lowest band possible and just take your time because if I was to drop a bolt here, then then this bag would pretty much be rendered useless at that point. So I'm just taking my time, making sure everything gets nice and secure, making sure the bag's staying flat, making sure it's staying in position where it needs to be, and that I can secure it uh, once I've got it attached. Now that I've got it attached, just as a little bit of extra security measures here, I'm gonna go ahead and tie off one of the D-rings. And what this does, this actually keeps the bag in position as we start to inflate it. Now, we typically use a compressor unit so the CETO and that compressor unit has a manifold that can control multiple bags and as you're lifting those bags from the surface the bags can shift so simply by securing it at the top just one little small piece of ropes all it takes by securing it there at the top of course we can make sure that bag does not shift as we go to lift it now that we've got everything secured we've got our two lift bags on the back we got a lift bag on the front for the end of this salvage if you will we're going to go ahead and go ahead and start inflating it and lifting it now i want you to see here i'm standing up on the dock now looking down you can see the very tight space that we have to work with i've got my other salvage diver he's still on the stern of the vessel there and he's just giving some uh, last minute pointers to to CETO crew members and just letting them know how we got things rigged but now you can start to see as these bags start to inflate they are going to take up even more space inside this slip or inside this dock area and we don't have much room to operate whatsoever so we're discussing here now should we put another bag up underneath or just continue to pump we've got the gunnels completely out of the water yes the um the cabin area is still completely submerged however since it's sealed off no water can come in the ports are sealed off the windows are sealed off now we can actually start pumping this vessel out and letting it raise itself as you start to pump the water out there you can see we got water flowing as we pump the water out it will raise itself and then we can slowly start to deflate the bag to give us more room to work with within the slip here once everything is said and done and we've got this vessel up we are gonna or we have to rig it up for transport now cito has got to tow this this particular boat several miles on this particular lake just to get to a local access point to where they can pull it out put it on a trailer so we want to make sure everything is floating make sure everything is rigged up the way it needs to be and this happens to be one of the jobs where we're not going to remove the bags we're actually going to leave the bags attached uh, during the tow process that way in case anything bad happens and CETO has to break free from this vessel as they're towing it it won't sink because we've got bags we're actually even going to leave a water pump attached and running so if it starts taking on water it can uh, pump that water out as well so when, once this vessel leaves the dock, we're going to feel 100% confident that they're going to be able to make it without this vessel sinking and just taking your time, working through problems and making sure that you're safe and your rigging is right, you can have a very successful job as well. Now we're going to continue to pump out the water here. It does take a while, even with big three inch pumps, it does typically take a while 
uh, to pump out all the water. We typically start with the hull area, then we're going to go to the cabin area, and then the engine compartment. We always try to get the pumps at the lowest point possible just so that we can get as much air or much water out as possible. We sometimes will even add a little bit of a weight or ballast to the vessel to get some of that water to shift so that we can pump it out. But now you can see the vessel is completely floating on its own. We have our bags completely deflated. There is no lift uh, picking this vessel up other than its own buoyancy. And we're just basically using Archimedes principle here, water displacement to float the vessel. We're gonna go ahead and get it rigged up for tow and go ahead and get the water pump put in place. And once we pull it away from the dock, then we're gonna reinflate these bags. There you can see the 1,000 we put on the front. That is just in case as he starts to tow the vessel, if it was to happen to take on water and sink, uh, we would you know, still have a little bit of lift to hold it up so we wouldn't lose the vessel. But as he starts to pull it slightly away from the dock, we'll go ahead and inflate the bags one last time just as a safety measure and then once he gets over to the ramp or the access point where he'll pull the vessel out then he can completely uh, remove everything but as you can see we have a very successful salvage we've got all the rigging in place where it needs to be uh, we were able to utilize the least amount of lift as possible to get this vessel up and to be honest these cabin cruisers are not that difficult to lift the only thing that made this job difficult was the tight space that we were working with um, and we constantly had to come up and down, up and down, up and down just to make sure that we could communicate um, and get everything the way we needed it. But there you can see, Cito's towing it away. They've got the bags in place. They've got the water pump in place. And of course, they will get it over to the access point, get it out for the owner, and everything else is good to go from this point on. All right, guys, as you can see, another successful salvage. We really enjoy helping CETO out. Those guys treat us like gold, and we like to return the favor to them as well. But I noticed that a lot of you guys ask in our comment section about salvage work. How can you get started in it? Yes, anybody can do this with the right training, the right equipment, and the right mindset. You can do this as well. You can be very successful, and you can make some pretty decent money doing it as well. But of course, safety is the primary goal here. We want you guys to be safe when you're doing that. With that being said, I wanna go ahead and drop a little hint for you guys. In the future, we are gonna be releasing a salvage work week for you, or a workshop for you. Now, this is gonna be hosted by Lake Hickory Scuba, and basically, we're gonna start with two times a year, we're gonna bring people in and teach them how to do salvage work. Now, it is going to incorporate multiple specialty certifications through SSI as well, so you're gonna get a lot of the training that I got growing up, and you're gonna get the training that you need to do successful salvage work, or just even basic search and recovery work as well. Now we're trying to work out the dates for the remainder of 2022 and the price for this as well. But if you're interested, keep looking on our website throughout the next month or so, and you may see this program pop up. Now this is gonna be a minimum of a one week long program. We're gonna go over anything from search techniques to how teams operate together, to even the equipment that you need from the bags that you should be getting to the compressor units, to uh, the pumps that we use. And we're gonna go over all that. We're even gonna go over sonar operations. So if you're having to go out in the water and look for stuff that you've got to find to salvage, we're either gonna go, or also go over that as well. So stay tuned for that as well. Because I really appreciate you watching our videos, especially these salvage videos. They are very, very difficult for us to make because you gotta understand, our first and foremost goal is safety. Our second goal is, of course, getting our customer's vessel up out of the water and floating again. And then of course our last goal was to make the videos educational for you. And it is very difficult for us to shoot these videos sometimes, especially when we put those other things above them. Because I, I hope you do enjoy the video. If you did, big thumbs up, definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always guys, we appreciate your business.